Jehovah. I will praise your name, Jehovah. You are that awesome God. You are that awesome. Hallelujah, mighty God. Oh, I will praise your name. You are that awesome God. Oh, I will praise your name, Jehovah. I will praise your name, Jehovah. Marita, I that this week we shall have intensive prayers and teaching on marriage interceding for our homes praying for our marriages and i posted on the platform in the course of the night our order of program for the week. The covenant of our blessing and the lunch and the bedtime prayer this week. The lunch of our blessing will continue on wisdom for life and destiny, the wisdom guidance series. And then our intercessory prayer by 3 p.m. resume back today. And it's going to run Monday through Friday. So since it's our week of marriage, we shall be praying for our marriage. Marital affairs, part one. Jesus breathed upon our understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Write down the following things. I told you last week that our teaching is going to be on series, expanding the few things the Lord has taught me so far about marriage. Expanding a few things the Lord has taught me so far about marriage. I hope we have somebody to help us take note of a few things quickly. There are 10 sub topics under these marital affairs. 10 sub topics. under these marital affairs. Number one. Number one is you as a right partner. You as a right partner. Most times we pray for the right partner. But are we actually a right partner ourselves? Oh God, arise. Give me God fearing man. Are you God fearing yourself? If a God fearing man marries a woman who is not God fearing, they will frustrate themselves. The God-fearing woman will frustrate the God-fearing man out of it. If a God-fearing woman marry a church member, a church worker, and not a child of God, it will frustrate her out of life. It's just a matter of time. Number two, the second subtopic the two major keys in getting anything right in life. Marriage inclusive. 
There are two major keys in getting anything right in life. Marriage is, is among those things that these two things can help you to get right. If you don't have these two, making wrong choice in marriage is not difficult. Number three, I'll just list them to you this morning. By 8.45, we begin to talk about them. But we have, please, I beg you, be part of three prayer intercessory prayers. Be part of it because there are prayers we pray in that 3 p.m. just to help us have more time to pray and teach in the evening. Number three. The three fundamental qualities of a life partner. The three fundamental qualities of a life partner. Number four. Biblical divination and purpose of marriage. Is anybody helping us to note anything here? Biblical divination and purpose of marriage. Number five. The seven prophetic counsel of marriage. The seven prophetic counsel of marriage. Number six, the marital responsibilities, the role of husband, the role of wife, the marital responsibility. Number seven, the true divination of an app meets. The true divination of an app meets. Number eight, the purpose and the duties of courtship. The purpose and the duties of courtship. Number nine. The godly order of positioning or operation of marriage. And then number 10, number 9, the godly order of positioning or operation of marriage. Number 10, the truth about marriage in consonance with destiny. The truth about marriage in consonance with destiny. The truth about marriage in consonance with destiny. So I go over it again. You as a right partner, the two major keys in getting anything right in life marriage inclusive the three fundamental qualities of the right life partner biblical definition and purpose of marriage the seven prophetic counsel of marriage 
the marital responsibilities. The true definition of an admit, the purpose and the duty of courtship, the purpose and duties of courtship, the godly order of positioning or operation of marriage. The truth about marriage in consonance with destiny. The truth about marriage in consonance with destiny. <laughs> now, a few statements before we go. Number one. A few statements before we go. Number one. Marriage is not a destiny yoke. A marriage is not a life yoke. Marriage is self-imposed yoke. You know, Jesus said, some made themselves eunuchs of men. Some were born eunuchs. Eunuchs are slaves. Marriage is not one of those things that joke you against your wish. Anyhow the marriage play out, know that you are the one that brought the yoke upon yourself. Stop blaming God or blaming anyone who encourages you to go ahead in that marriage. I love something for that. When he wanted to marry a Philistine ladies, lady, all he was saying, Father, marry, marry her for me. Mother, marry her for me. He did not say, Father, mother, I want to marry her because Angel Gabriel told me she's the person. The confusion of many of you is prophecy. The confusion of many of you is dream. I dreamt that I was under the sun and it was raining. You see, I was confused already. And it came from nowhere and put up on my head. The way it came from nowhere, that's why we go to nowhere and disappear to nowhere. So marriage is not a destiny yoke. Marriage is not a life yoke. Marriage is self-imposed yoke. To the end, the Bible says, He that findeth a wife. He that findeth a wife. Findeth good thing. So you need to be praying as a lady that the man that will find you will be who will help you to become somebody. Number two statement I want you to note before you go. Marriage, the product called marriage, is 50% of who you are, 50% of who your spouse is. The product called marriage. Is 50% of who you are, 50% of who your spouse is. That is the product called marriage. Old God arise. Make my marriage glorious. If you live a glorious life, you live an excellent and a disciplined life, your marriage will be glorious. Oh, this one is harder. Be. That's the truth. Because we have come to a generation whereby we believe that marriage is because one devil in one place, in one form, 
is actually at work. So my marriage is deformed because there are too much battles in my family. No, the battles some marriages are facing is worse than what you are facing. You will see marriage of one year, two years, three years because of no child. The marriage has turned upside down. Wife has packed out of the house. But you will see marriages of 20 years. No child. That is joy. That is unity. That is peace. There is joy. There is unity. So marriage is fifty percent is a product of the hundred percent you, the hundred percent your spouse. All right. All you know about marriage will only be profitable. If your spouse also have the right knowledge about marriage, if your husband or your wife is coming to marriage with traditional mentality, you will have problem. The tradition of our fathers. Our father says this is the mother we are to worship. So our father's tradition is that wife must call their husband Lord. That's the mentality your husband is bringing. And you are going into the marriage, you have problem. The hundred percent you is fifty percent of the marriage. Is the fifty percent raw material that will make the marriage. The hundred percent of power is fifty percent raw material that will make the marriage. So if the fifty percent of your spouse is wrong. But whatever is wrong in the life of your spouse will affect the marriage. We affect the marriage. Number three says statement. Number three statement. If you are not developing positively and accurately, if you are not developing positively and accurately, you will affect the progress and the destiny of your spouse. So when you take responsibility for your growth, your positive and accurate growth, you will boost. You will bring speed and grace to the life of your spouse. So a, an husband, a husband, the man who failed to take responsibility for his growth, we be a stumbling block to the advancement of the life and destiny of his wife. The wife will refuse to take responsibility for her growth. We be a stumbling block to the progress and the advancement of his of her husband. So what we call wrong marriage are people who had refused to take responsibility first for their personal self. So they are not growing. They are affecting negatively the one that is growing. So why the one that is not growing is casting cruise in the marriage? The one who is growing, who is striving to become somebody, is feeling burdened. And oppressed. I'm revealing to you the things the Lord has teach me personally about marriage. No husband should stop growing. No wife should stop growing. 
you will become a burden. It will become a subject of the living carrying the dead. And you know a dead body usually becomes more heavier than when it's alive. It becomes a subject of the living carrying the dead. When you are not growing, you stop growing, either spiritually, mentally, especially in these two areas, you stop growing spiritually, you stop growing mentally, you become like a dead trailer asking your wife or husband who is a car to tow you. Then the last statement I want to make before letting you go this morning on this subject, marital affairs. Your spiritual personal challenge and battle is 50% of the spiritual battle in your marriage. And then your spouse spiritual personal challenge and battle is 50% of the spiritual and challenges in your marriage. What does it mean? If you are on your toe as wife or as husband fighting your battles, praying, confronting the devil, wrestling with your life and destiny, the man too or the woman too is fighting our whole battle. There will be less war. There will be less trouble in the marriage. These are, the, these are what we call marital trouble. These are what we call marital trouble. Isaac was a product of a man and a woman who has fought their battle who spent 25 years before they can be delivered from adultery. Rebecca was like a fresh meat. Isaac is like a, 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 a cooked down meat. Rebecca was like a fresh meat before God will help Isaac to help Rebecca fight the battle to a large extent. It wasted 20 years out of the life of Isaac. Just 20 years, baby. Twenty years. Despite that Isaac was a cook done meat. Oh God, what happened? Since I got married, it's like my life has been stagnant. Before you blame your wife. That's because I married you. That's how my life is like this. So go and ask yourself a question. Have you really fought your battles to the degree that there are no battles waiting for you to marry before they begin to manifest? Have you? So becoming complacent as a wife, either to your spiritual growth, to your mental growth, or to your to the, to the warfare and the battles in your life, in your foundation, in your family line, is bringing load, luggage, yoke, or slow progress, stagnation into your home. Becoming complacent as a man to your spiritual growth, to your mental growth, and to the battles and challenges in the family that you are coming from, is bringing load that will weigh down the speed of progress of your husband, of your wife. Go and meditate on these few statements as we continue this week on this marital affairs. May my Father in heaven bless you today. My Father in heaven help you today. May he fight for you. May he lift you. May he empower you. May he take you from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from might to might, from power to power. Thank you, living Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.
Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Don't forget, Lord, our blessing by 12 noon. We continue in wisdom guide, wisdom for life and destiny. We continue on that. Because of the gap of the numbers of days, we may have to repeat the last teaching so that we can catch up from there. We continue from there where we stop. And then don't forget intercessory prayers purely, not even intercessory prayer now this week. I think it's personal supplication prayers because you are praying for ourselves. Nobody is praying for you. I'm praying for myself. You are praying for yourself. So everyone connecting is praying for themselves. Nobody is praying for you. So be part of it on the WhatsApp platform by 3 p.m. It's just one and a half hour. 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. And don't forget 8.45 p.m. Invite somebody. Somebody needs prayer. Somebody needs revelation. The enemy had done a lot of intelligent work against marriages. And the grace of God will help us to correct and reposition our homes in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you by 12 noon. Have a prosperous day. Shalom.